sorry about that. I didn't record. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Okay, and so this is just an overview of what we've got for social media at Michigan Tech. Um, you can see Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn. Um, we also have Snapchat, uh, Pinterest, and um, YouTube. So we're reaching 100,000 plus people every day. And it's growing. Um, we're making a lot of great um, connections. Um, we engage with three targeted audiences. We've got prospective students, alumni, and research partners, which can also be um, corporate partners. And you can see all of our content buckets. Um, don't let that overwhelm you. These are the areas of interest we found that um, resonate with people when we're trying to start conversations. And when you're thinking about your own content, things you might want to create for whatever your online persona is going to be, these might be some things that um, you'd like to share or think about sharing. And then again, this is just a kind of a look at um, where our audiences break out. And we have a mission for each platform. And I would suggest for all of you, um, you know, we love the Dolly Parton meme where we've got like the different personas for each, you know, the cat or <laughs> we did a husky, whatever. But it, it really is true on each platform. It's got a little bit of a different personality. And um, some of them may speak to you more than others. And like, please remember, you don't need to do all of them. You can decide you know, what's important for you um, and what you really resonate with. Like, for example, I love Instagram because I love pictures and I just love everything about it. So that's my thing. And I have a lot of fun with LinkedIn because um, it's really cool to connect professionally. I'm a writer, I've written a novel as well. So it's just really cool to connect professionally. So what platform should you choose? I like to use the donut analogy, which is um, a long-standing analogy in um, social media, but still a good one. So on Facebook, it would be, I like donuts. And so you should be on Facebook if you can do one or two posts a day regularly. Um, if you've got um, a good um, URL that you can link to and you can monitor your messages a little bit. And then also it's just a great place to connect with your community friends and your family. Um, Facebook is like the warm fuzzy. And so um, it's, a, it's a nice place to be, for example, if, you're, if you um, have a cool project that you're sharing and you want to ask other family members or other friends to share it, then that's a great platform for that. Um, YouTube is actually the second most popular search engine after um, Google. And so if you've got video, if you've got, um, it doesn't necessarily have to be super polished. It just has to be interesting. But if you're doing interesting things with video or you're doing experiments in the lab or um, you're doing presentations or whatever, you know, it might be something that you would want to consider doing. And I will share out all these slides so we don't have to laboriously read all of them, but you can um, kind of take a look at these if you want to go back through later and um, GSG can share those. And then um, Instagram is like, here's a high resolution photo of my donut. <laughs> and so you're actually looking at um, beautiful, you're saying it in pictures. You're, you're letting the picture do the talking. And it can be a feeling. Um, it doesn't, ha again, it doesn't have to be super polished, but I encourage people to choose a persona and to, that's, that feels true to them. So um, I also think it's a great idea to pick a couple of themes. Um, for example, when Jamie Berger was here, um, if you look at her Instagram, Berger with a side of code, she coded rap and she went crazy during Black History Month bringing in people famous in computer science for Black History Month. And she also did a lot, which she eventually has ended up going into teaching. She found that to be her true love. And she did a lot of here I am teaching. So you pick some different categories rather than just being like, um, uh, G, G does running, here's what I had for dinner, and here is an awesome professional conference. Mm -hmm. So he's got like three buckets that he does that are amazing. Jake Voss, he is with some interfaith water engineering project now. I forget what country, but his buckets are, he's profiling local people that he met who have touched his life. He's profiling their work, and then he's an outdoor guy. So he's also profiling hiking, swimming, what he's seeing and what he's doing in his spare time. But everybody's like, 
like honing in on a few things. So LinkedIn, my skills include donut eating. So on LinkedIn, this is where you really want to shine. And this is one area where I always recommend, even if you're looking for a job, and Beth, you probably have things to add for this, don't exude desperation. Like really, really try to get a great tagline. And it takes, it takes longer to write short than it does to write long. But really, really get, try to get a great tagline that sums up what you're about like what you want to do and what you do. And rather than looking for all current job postings or some of the same things you see on a lot of LinkedIn accounts, you really want to make it be what makes me, me. You know, and of course you're doing it in a more professional way. Um, if, you know, LinkedIn is, you're suited up, you're professional, um, and you're also going to be like tagging people that are in your industry or following people that are in your industry. Um, you can post with a URL and a photo once a day, Monday through Friday. It's like business. It's like a bank. It's open nine to five, right? So you, this is a great low pressure one. And I would even say for an individual account, if you're only posting a couple times a week, it's okay. Just don't be that person with the round gray shadow head and, um, your job is outdated or you don't have it listed at all, you, you don't have it updated. Like don't, don't be on anything if you're not gonna keep it up to date. You know, just don't do that to yourself because that's almost worse than not having anything. So, and some of this you can see because we just talked to um, people who were participating in Husky Innovate. So you can see some of this is also linked to teams. So like if you're on Superior website, uh, you're on Superior Ideas or you've got a team going or whatever, these are all also great ideas for your team. So Twitter is better with sprinkles, hashtag Jonah. So Twitter, mm -hmm. science Twitter is huge. So if you're in any of the sciences, the first thing you wanna do if you have a Twitter account is you wanna go in and you wanna follow MTU Research as well as our regular account. And then you wanna follow each and every one of our researchers who are on there. And they um, actually can give you lots of ideas and inspiration about how to um, engage on Twitter. It's also when you're going to a conference, it's the thing to do. And it's also a great place if you um, have a specialty that you're focusing on, find out what the hashtag is for that. Like is the hashtag sustainability, is the hashtag computing, is the hashtag a AI. You can easily search Twitter to find out which hashtags are trending and uh, what the hashtags look like and go ahead and hop into those streams and start following. So also, I always recommend everybody check out um, Lake Superior on Twitter because it's hilarious. It's literally Lake Superior talking to us and telling us things. So for any platform, you're not trying to get a million followers and be a rock star. You're just liking to be liked, following to be followed, and share to be shared. And um, even, if, even if it's competitors, it's different people in your field, um, post all post consistently. It doesn't have to be, you know, every second of the day, but post consistently. Uh, don't let your accounts be dead. Twitter is littered with dead Michigan Tech accounts. Uh, you know, there's things you go and look at, oh, cool, I can link to them. And it's like, no, the last time someone posted on this was 2009. So if you do have stuff out there, you can go in and clean it up as well. I always recommend that and spell check all of your posts. There's nothing that makes a worse impression than something that's not spelled correctly. Um, a lot of these platforms, you can speak informally, but you still need to spell things correctly. Um, look at aim high, like look at um, people that you would like to be, that you would like to emulate, researchers that you admire, teachers that you admire, industry people that you admire. Start following them and do what they do. Find other, other accounts that you like. If somebody really cracks you up on Twitter or they always post something that's really cool, you know, retweet, uh, follow what they do. So it's very much about community, like creating your community that's authentically you. Uh, don't be afraid to make the big ask. Like when my novel came out, Roxanne Gay is a huge, huge author and she very, very, you know, bestseller list. And I knew she was a Michigan Tech alumni. So I reached out and asked her if she would review my book. Um, and she didn't have time. And she said no, but she wrote me a beautiful note. And then the next time I wanted to ask somebody to share or like or do something, I wasn't as scared. 
because it was like, oh, somebody said no, and like, I'm not dead. Like I didn't, the world didn't fall apart because somebody said no. And so it's always worth asking people, you know, find your heroes and, and start conversations with them. And then always be grateful, report your progress. If people help you, I can't say enough about saying thank you. And then if you're doing crowdfunding or anything like that, think about offering engagement incentives. Uh, also interacting with other accounts. So if you're in a team and you create like a, you have your enterprise Facebook page or you have like a lab Facebook page or whatever, like no, if you don't like and follow each other, who will? So like be your own best friends as well, like when you're working on team things. So hashtags, um, just briefly, they're a little bit different on Instagram than they are on Twitter. But the thing you can do is be simple. You don't have to make up your own hashtag. We always ask that you use hashtag Michigan Tap on anything because then we can find you. And if your post is really cool, we might share it, which we will always reach out and ask you if we, if we can share it. And then, um, for example, if you wanted to say something like um, Lake Superior is really cool, a better hashtag would just be Lake Superior. There's going to be more people in that stream. Some of the um, most popular hashtags, um, the most popular hashtag, as far as I know, on, like, on Instagram is still love. So words like love, eyes, sun, water. So you want to get into some of those bigger hashtag streams. And then you can also use like more specific hashtags like Michigan Pack. So there are search tools, and then for us, they're also brand elements. So where can you get content? You hear this all the time from people, oh my gosh, what do I post? Um, gather your assets. That's the first thing you can do is start thinking about different things. Um, photos, you need to have good photos. You can take good photos with a photo. Um, videos are also great. By 2021, which is coming up really quick, they're talking about uh, most of the content on social media being so it's just more engaging for people, and that's where we're headed with our eight-second attention spans. Um, also, mine existing content. I mean, all the departments have web pages. All the schools have web pages. Um, there are a lot of great stories out there on Michigan Tech News. There are websites. There are blogs. Do a look at, little looking around and share out some of those links. And if you do, you might not just end up getting shares from a department or shares from somebody else. But there's all these we have, I believe the current count is 20,000 web pages within the Michigan Tech Content Management System. So within all of those pages, there are things that resonate for you and what you're doing, you know, as a student and, and moving toward being a professional or, or going on with your studies or your research. And so go ahead and go in there and look, start, start jumping around. You might be surprised at what you find and you can share it. You can also go in on Michigan Tech Flickr. You don't need a password or anything. You can download and share any photographs you find on Michigan Tech Flickr. They're all free and they're available. So even if you wanna say, hey, Winter Carnival is so awesome. Hi, come on in. Even if you wanna, even if you just wanna post about, I'm so excited about Winter Carnival or, um, this is our under ice research. There are pictures on Flickr that all you need to do is just go and get them. So there's no charge and we want everybody to share them. Just make, and the other thing you can do is make sure that all the profiles and pages you have are polished and current. We talked about that a little bit with LinkedIn. But don't have old, shadow head, um, incorrect, broken link view out there. That's not the online persona that you want. So, and then also remember you wanna be polished, but you also wanna be yourself. I can't say enough about this. Like you're here in this world to be you. Like only you can be you, right? And if you're gonna put up some kind of a facade and just like pretend to be who you think others want you to be, you're not gonna be as successful as if you're just your awesome self. So always remember that too. Like don't, don't say or do anything on social media to make yourself look good. Just be good, just be who you are. And that really does shine through. So um, this is one of my um, favorite marketing people, Seth Godin, he writes really good things. But the thing that you wanna be doing when you're on social media or any online presence is telling your story. Uh, you wanna 
you want to share and you want to help and you want to reach out to people and you want to connect in whatever way, whatever that means to you. So these are some other ideas for your content. Memes and gifts are always good. Thanking is good. Um, if you're in the, feel free to do live student stories or videos, lab tours. Um, for older content, we've got um, the ever popular Throwback Thursday and Flashback Friday. So always feel free to like go back in the day when you were like in your high school chem lab or whatever, or you just come across a cool old picture on the Michigan Tech Archive social media and you share that. Um, think about um, other things too, like about your work and your passion. Like why, what are the high points? What were the biggest obstacles? What makes your work important to you? Because sharing things like that are really important. Um, you should try to get your main idea out first. The thing you want to say should be the first thing, whether that's sound on for a video or this was the coolest project I ever did. Then you can go into more detail. But what we find, especially with social media, is like get to the point first thing. Then you can go in and fill in more about different details. But don't wind it up like you're writing a letter with your salutation and your introduction. Just get right to it, right to what you want to say. So positive is important too. And here, besides being negative, here are a few other don'ts. Don't post anything that would offend your advisor or your grandma. Like just think twice about posting, like nobody needs to see six pack bathroom selfies or you know, things like that. Like really think about, think about somebody who might hire you looking at that post or think about, you know, think about your grandma or your advisor looking at it. Um, we talked about using like um, things that smack of desperation unless you're gonna do a funny hiring. Um, Pasting dead links into your post. Sometimes people say, here's my awesome thing that was published and blah, blah, blah. And they'll post it in Instagram. And Instagram, you can't post links in stories. They don't populate to anything. So it's just this long, messy URL of letters that nobody can get to. So what you would want to do for that instance is just do a little research and find out how can I get people to my story. And the answer with that is you would post the link in your bio. Um, some of the other platforms, you can post a link, but it's worth your time to go and look and see because it's upsetting to people. It's like jarring if they go to go to your URL and it doesn't go anywhere. The other thing is like when you post a URL on Facebook, after the picture pops up and it's all there and you see the little headlining thing or whatever, you can just, you can just erase that URL so you don't have that, that long string of like distracting letters or whatever. It just makes it look nicer and more professional. Um, I know that not everybody can get two pairs of eyes on a social media post, but please check your spelling and read it out loud and take a deep breath, like breathe before you post. Like, especially if you're getting into a contentious thing with somebody, which you might not want to do anyway, but like really take a breath and think about what you're posting because it does, what you put out there does have impact. Um, also, try not to use all caps and other odd spellings of your name or your handle. Like if you're like on Instagram or something and it's like, oh, that's taken. So I'll just be JB Goofy underscore nine seven three exclamation point. Try to get as close to your real name and your real identity as possible. On LinkedIn, we see a problem with early LinkedIn folks who did their names or companies in all shouty capital letters, and then they've got like a comma and they've got incorporated, and so there's no way to really make that look nice in a post. It just kind of looks like they didn't know what they were doing. It looks a little blocky, so. And then don't worry because people like, you can see how much I like it and I can go on talking about it forever, but it is only social media. It is not the end of the world and the professional contacts, the best ones that you make, they're still gonna be personal and private. But I suggest that you pick one or two platforms for different things and you know, give it a try, but don't let it overwhelm you and don't let it distract you from your, your real work because that's really important. And then just a little shout out, please, if you're not already liking and following us on your socials of your choice, please do. And you can always get us at social at mtu.edu if you have any questions about things. Um, we do answer questions. So 
you know, feel free to hit us up. And then does anybody have questions? Okay. <laughs> I kind of just want to keep that up. <laughs> um, yeah, does anybody have questions? Just reiterate a little bit on um, some of the things too that Cindy had touched on. So I'm Beth Lay, I'm the hand director of Career Services, and you know I think Cindy has done so much of like what should you do, which I'm sitting there going, I need this, I need this presentation. <laughs> and I was just saying like I need to update this and I need to go after that. Um, but I think there's also a lot of things that you all probably know that you shouldn't do, which is are the things that that's, that Cindy talked about too, and. We see that a lot in the professional world. So I, I can say I have not hired people because of their social media. Um, personally, I have been on hiring committees where literally we're all sitting there, we're in the middle of a phone interview, and you know we may have 10 back-to-back -back phone interviews that we're doing, and we're literally sitting there like someone's going through as this person's kind of talking, and we're quick pulling up their Facebook, and then someone's like, you're all <laughs> And all because of what they had posted. Um, I had I had worked for admissions at a college for a long time, so obviously we're sort of the ones that you know are out there branding the university to bring prospective students and parents. And I had a, a student who had said, "I'm really interested. I think I want to go into higher ed. I'm thinking I want to to work in admissions." And um, had kind of done the right things, reached out for that personal contact, um, had shadowed with us, all of this, and I'm thinking. I'm got an entry-level position coming up. This person's really showed that they're already interested. They've taken initiative. Like, this could be a really good candidate. And another student, this student was with me at an event shadowing. And another student later on told me, it's like, I don't think, you know, I'm curious. I saw so-and-so was shadowing with you. And I'm thinking they're going to say, like, I want to do that too. And I said, you know, I just want to do a quick little search on Twitter. I just left it at that. So, of course, I'm like, pulling this and this, I mean, super inappropriate, unprofessional, like kind of bashing the university. And I mean, it was like, why would I even consider you for an interview? If that is your open online presence, I could find that so easily. Why would I take you for that? And so I think, I think now most of our students are savvy enough to not hurt yourself you know, in your professional life with social media, but there are still some that are out there. I know there's a lot of them. Um, college career centers that host events called Digging for Dirt. And unfortunately, we don't have enough staff to do that with all of our students. But I really encourage students to go Google yourself. Yes. You all know, I'm sitting there when I was back in the day doing like, like the online dating thing. Of course, before I go on a date with somebody, I'm sitting there like, I'm Google that thing. Like, you know, I'm finding out anything that I possibly can. And there were times I'm like, oh, nope, not doing that. Cancel on that day. That's not happening. That's not happening. Um, and then also sitting there going, what are, what are the people who will make? Like, you know, what are the things that are coming up? And again, you'd be surprised things that you think you have private settings on that you may not, or things are super old but are still out there, clean that up. So dig, dig on the dirt for yourself too, because there, again, not every employer is going to, but you would hate to be so far into an interview process or a professional process of looking for a job and not get it because of what you're putting out there on social media. Um, and the other thing is too, you think of how many times have you all said, they are making me like this going on on Facebook or Twitter right now, screenshot it, send it to your friends. I literally just did that with my aunt and my cousin who are having an online familial bash on Facebook and I'm screenshotting the whole scenario and sending it to my sister like, can you believe this is happening right now? Even if they go and delete it, somebody screenshotted it, sent it off. Um, and so again, before that read, before you post, because you've all had that where you're like reading something to kind of get heart palpitations as you're watching kind of like fights sort of start to happen on there and you want to fire something back. But knowing that again, someone's gonna say, hey, guess what you did with that Facebook? And that was not cool. And clearly they were not keeping calm and collected. So I think just adding to that, I think you all know that, but it's but it is really important to keep those things in mind. Again, we just would not want to not get a job because of social media. I think there's a lot better ways we can do that 
your positive health rules to make sure that you can improve to what is intended. Questions that you all have? So what would be the different use of this is done a lot of talking about going towards like how you professionally present yourself and that you obviously need to be careful about what you're posting online. But we are also all people that chances are some of us are um, on social media service, but it's just because this is like my personal thing. Is there really a difference between private and professional online presence or are they really just kind of your online is public that's like the same thing? I don't think that the line, the line is so blurred. Uh, and I think that it's cool to show personal passion and personal pursuits. But I don't think I don't think that there is, I don't think that employers make a distinction. And I don't think that people who are um, looking at the merits of your work or your um, profession, I don't think it makes so I think that you have to be careful on everything you do with anything you do online. You, you have to like keep in mind that a potential employer or whomever, you know, a potential fr a friend, a potential whomever could be looking at that and making assumptions based on the imagery or the impression that you've created. Like it's this huge power, right? You have this huge power. I mean, in a way, it's cool because we can use it for good, not evil. Like, we can definitely share, like, the best parts of ourselves. But then there's this other side um, where we do tend to get, and I mean, it's, the nation is, I would venture to say the world is supercharged right now with a lot of vitriol and polarity and divisiveness. And it is really easy to get pulled into that. But, um, for that, I suggest people go out for coffee or beer or whatever your libation of choice is and back to each other rather than taking it online because stuff doesn't get solved online. And we already know that face-to-face -face communication is the best way to resolve situations. So you just gotta be careful. But I would say too, like I'm not professional Beth and a home life Beth, right? I'm Beth. And I'm Beth as director of career services, I'm Beth as a passionate aunt of four kids. I am Beth who's making home renovations. So whatever I'm posting online is something that if a student saw it, I wouldn't want a student to go, oh my gosh, director of career services, whatever, because it's just me. And so I make sure that, you know, kind of if, if I don't want my grandma to see it, I'm not going to post it. If I don't want a student to see it, if I don't want a uh, colleague somewhere down the road to see it or someone else, I'm not going to it on there. So I think you're right. There's there's this, you know, of course what I post on LinkedIn is going to be different than the things that I post on Instagram, kind of like the Dolly Parton thing that we're talking about. Yeah. Um, you know, on on my Instagram I'm posting about my life and your bathroom renovations. On my bathroom renovations. But I but I post <laughs> that, that that kind of stuff. But it's nothing that someone's like, oh my gosh, yeah. You know, like um, but I, you know, I'm not going to also post that on, on LinkedIn where my persona is more putting out there about career development and things like that too. But so I think it's, you know, for most of us, I wouldn't say that there's a super two different people or the, we're the same person in work. And, and now I would tend to lean more towards again, if I'm, if I'm sitting there going, should I post this? I don't. If I'm questioning whether or not I should post something, I typically err on the side of, I'll hold off on that. If by tomorrow I'm still coming around saying, I think I'm kind of thinking about it, I can post it at that point. Uh, that's kind of the, the rule of them that I go by too, is you're not, you're not all these different people, you're one, you're one person. And it's like, what do you want to put out in the world? Yeah. And I'm guessing, because of what you're all doing, that you want to put good stuff out in the world. Like you, what do you want to put out in the world? It comes down to that. And if you think about it that way, that helps a lot with deciding what you're going to put on social media. And I think also knowing that what you're putting out there, not everyone's going to agree with it, right? Like, especially I think coming up on political season, right? And so if you're, it doesn't mean that you can't, like everybody has to agree with you. It's okay to post your views as long as you know you're going to have people who disagree with you. 
And when it comes to certain things when we're talking about employers where students say, well, I don't want to show this part of my personality because the employer might not like it, then you need to decide, is that an employer that you're actually interested in? And, or should you be posting it? And there's kind of this, this line for you, what makes sense? Um, you know, but I've had, I've had students who've been very out and vocal about certain personal issues of their own. And they'll say, well, I don't know if an, again, if an employer is going to agree with that. If they don't, and that's something that is really passionate, or it's something that's a big passion of yours, you have to wait. Emma, you got those people in. We got those employers you don't want to work for. But you can still be professional while doing it, too, if that makes sense. Yeah, it's um, one of the accounts that um, I like to follow, and I cover their story as well as the sustainability demonstration house. And they're super vocal about like, where's your bamboo spoon and why are you using plastic cups? And, but they are calling you in, they're not calling you out. Like they're very, very um, strident really and forceful about what they want to say about zero waste. But they're doing it in a way that's not, you know, attacking or pulling down others. They're just saying, you know, this is, there's a better way and this is what you want to do. I like that calling people in versus calling people out. Do any of you have any feedback on that same comment? I think it's very controversial to do. Like when you're on into it and you want people to do it, and you do go on sometimes yelling at people, don't do them, but I really love the way you do it. They they ask you to do something, they don't they don't threaten you for not doing something, they ask you. Uh, I found it very interesting the new new work that they are coming with, like get your own lunch box and you want to have get your own spoon. Okay, the, the next post was like, I have cups for you at the cafe, you can use them if you just forgot here. It's okay, everyone forget. Hmm. So that's that's something like calling in and all funny. I like it too. <laughs> so it's it's very inspiring kind of like how do you portray yourself? Yeah, because we don't want you at all to be like bland. Oh, I'm not going to say anything. I'm just going to be like the neutral smiley face to everything because the world is not like that. There's stuff that needs to be, there's stuff that needs to be cleaned up. There's stuff that needs to be protected. There's discoveries that need to be made. There's stuff that needs to get done. So it's not like it's all rainbows and unicorns and flossing blizzards. But you know, there is a way to look at those big issues that that does bring people together and not pull them apart. That is the way I think also it's something to grow the followers because they're not uh, they're not sending every people that is still not following along with them and uh, because they are they're telling you what we can do and many of us can connect to it. I think we are very part of it, not everything. That way they're just involving everyone rather than just meeting and keep along very it's super inclusive yeah 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 and um the thing is you don't see them they don't have a ton of followers yet but these things it takes time to grow accounts it takes time and then what you find as soon as you've got some numbers is, that, is it's not even really you know um what i used to tell myself on linkedin because conwell reiki is awesome on linkedin and if you're not following conwell reiki on linkedin but um, what I would tell myself is if we get, if I only get one like, but it's kind of all Reiki, well, that's fine. I'm fine with that. You know, really all you're just trying to do is like one connection at a time. Because you can look at your numbers and be like, oh my gosh, I have a million followers. But what does that really mean? Analytically, does that mean anything? You know, we wrestle with that with our Michigan Tech social media quite a bit. How does that translate into um, enrollment? How does that translate into people knowing more about our researchers? And a lot of times, um, a good website or sitting down one-on-one -on -one with someone is going to yield you more results than maniacally posting on social media to get more followers. So you just really have to have a healthy attitude also the idea of like taking digital detoxes from time to time because we're all staring at screens all day long. So sometimes it's fun to just like read a book or go for a walk. Other 
questions. Um, we're going to go to Twitter and science Twitter. And um, um, I know she's not before and maybe you want to talk. Um, we're talking about how there are usually some conferences going on on Twitter. Mm -hmm. That was probably yeah. Alice and I Yeah. <laughs> She's fantastic. She's a science um, expert. She runs Twitter research, and then um, our science writer, um, Kelly Christensen, runs our regular Twitter platform. Mm -hmm. But um, the sub conferences that happen, if you've been to conferences, you might see this. Uh, they will have different hashtags for the different tracks. And so then people are actually tweeting real time what's happening in their conference. For example, I just went to High Ed Web Conference and our digital um, services lead, Joel Burton, was giving a talk on BD, um, BDM VP of managers and talking about management styles that really bring people together and help teams be successful. And you can look at the stream by following the hashtag and everybody that was doing MVP, track A, whatever. So when you go to conferences, you want to take note of those hashtags. Um, some conferences are really, really good at putting them out. They'll be in the hallway, and then they'll be in separate meeting rooms. And then that's just a great way to engage by just like um, snapping a picture of the speaker or including a really, um, a really cool quote, something cool that they said or whatever. And then you just kind of never know. Um, I, I think Allison and Joel both have people that they um, had never actually met until the conference that they met up with beginning on a conference Twitter. So science Twitter and conference Twitter are, Twitter's like a fire hose. It's just like zoom, you know, that's why you have to post so much on it to like get engagement. But um, it's really for breaking news, breaking events, um, pop science stuff. Like Amy Macarelli talks about how she, why she got on Twitter She's sitting at a conference and these people all around her are talking about a paper. And she's like, where did that come from? And they're like, oh, it's on the Twitter. You know? And she's like, then I had to get on the Twitter. <laughs> and so now she's like partnering with all the all different kinds of other agencies and grants and other things that come through. The other great thing you can do is you can like, we do it all the time. Like if you do NASA, um, DOE, um, NSF, um, they're all, on social media and you can tag them and you can what especially when you've got grants they love it and i age all of them i think nat geo and nasa are both in the top 10 of instagram accounts so nasa is like a big so that's another thing you can do too is if you really don't even want a social media account you don't want to be super active you can just put up a basic starter thing and then just start following people and just, you know, it's not creepy. Just follow. You, know, you can follow along and watch what's going on, and then maybe you feel comfortable jumping in, or then maybe you decide, oh, this isn't for me. I'm going to be at my account. Mm -hmm. And then maybe start up, you know, again at another time. But you don't have, you should be easy with it and not let it like take over your life. Okay, also, the, the conference note. You know, being on LinkedIn or something and, and following these other professionals. Then when I go to a conference, I'm like, okay, yeah. And I'm looking up, they, like, being able to put a name to a position, to a face when you're, you know, you see them online, and then they're like, okay, now I kind of feel like I at least can trigger my memory a little bit about who these different people are, which is also really helpful. Yeah, and you've got a talking point then because you're like, hey, I saw your paper on whatever, and I, you know, super helpful to man. So actually a funny story with that. So I was at a, a conference, this is now you know, four years ago probably. Um, and it was our national conference in Chicago. So there's like 4,000 attendees at this conference. Some of you, if you've been on conferences or grants or you've this before. And um, at lunch, it's like eight person, you know, round tables, whatever, and you know, 4,000 people. So you just kind of plop down. And I met up with a coworker and we're sitting there. And there's a bunch of other small conversations going on. And she goes, I think the guy across the table has a husky on his shirt. And, and at the time, I lived in New Hampshire. I went to the University of New Hampshire. And she goes, it looks like it says Vish something on there. Isn't that your hometown? So 
I went in and I went on to LinkedIn and I quick looked up the shoes and I contacted from LinkedIn from career services. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I think that's that's unfortunate. Oh, so that's going <laughs> to career services. And so you know, so I put in there and I go. That, you know, when there was a break in conversation, I was waiting across the table, but and I said, are you Steve Patchell? Are you the director of Christian Institution? I go and follow you on LinkedIn, and I really like the article you posted. So we had a conversation. The funny part about that is we actually posted, you know, that's my hometown. Um, we took a selfie together. <laughs> Guess who's in Steve Patchell's role right now? I am. <laughs> and that was partly because of that conference. I met him there. Down the road, I heard that there might be a position coming. We already met, we had had a conversation, we had then kind of shared things on LinkedIn after that, kept up that. You know, and at that point, when I met him at that conference, I was a complete beginner. I wasn't planning to, to work at Michigan Tech. So it's partly just about the in person networking, but also because I could look up and, and made that connection and we were able to keep up via social media on LinkedIn, that led me to a job interview that led me to eventually taking this job. Not that I didn't boot him out, I don't want to make him out like that. Uh, but he laughed, but you know. So it's, I, I was thinking, I'm like, I should take a selfie of the two of us now. I'm like, hey, this is how we met, talking about networking, social media, in action, into the role there. So it really, it really kind of made an impact. Yeah, and I love that story because you always, I don't know about you, but I'm always like, oh, Am I remembering their name yeah. correctly? Is this who I think it is or whatever? So I do I do almost obsessively like to double check. Mm -hmm. And so that that's like a quick look at a picture or whatever. Other questions or, or comments? Yeah. I was just thinking about mostly with the future. So you have, you might have a social media profile that person maybe you don't post everything so maybe you don't put before the people and you tell them what they're doing or maybe not comment just checking on people so what kind of impressions that that give others and all of them because that's that kind of is kind of it looks like it's already defined but on the other hand if you have not put <coughs> my person and I'm not posting I'm not posting the way and I'm actually active on here it's like to my point so what kind of impression does that give maybe on the professional Honestly, when you're looking to position yourself for um, a job or for a project or just for something where you're wanting to like swim into a bigger realm or do something different, uh, it would be who you to post a little bit more. And you don't always have to be posting original content. I mean, you can share, um, you can retweet if it's Twitter, you can or, or share from Facebook and just make a little comment. So if you're looking, even for five minutes a day, chances are there's something you see that's interesting, or maybe not even every day. But um, if you're if you're gonna if you know that you're in it, it it probably would be good to post a little bit. And companies who, so companies can, um, they have a level of a LinkedIn that's called a recruiter's platform. And so larger companies will purchase a recruiter's platform and that a lot of times is actually what they're using now to search for candidates more than going to career fairs or whatever. Um, and so I had a friend of mine who she works for Lint Chocolate and she um, showed us actually how she uses that platform. And so what she'll do is she'll go on and she'll put in all these keyword searches, which you all know about when you're you know, searching for jobs. So she'd go and put all these keyword searches, like I'm looking for a chemical engineer with this background. Maybe they've worked for Hershey's in the past or some other chocolatierian company or whatever. Um, and then she gets her list of, you know, maybe it has 150 people that have those keywords in there. Then what she does is she actually see your, how active you are. Okay, now who of those people on there, even just like, follow LinkedIn. Um, and then she'll narrow that down, or I mean, like chocolate. So then she'll narrow it down, and maybe she'll only have like 40 candidates left. And then they actually go through and we'll look at how, what is your average response rate to messages? So that they can pull out people that aren't responding to messages on LinkedIn are probably less likely, well, what's the point? Why would I then send a message to them if they're not gonna respond? But those that have a quicker response rate, she prioritizes and moves up to the top. 
time. So it's, it's not even that they posted a ton all the time, but it is that they're following the company. And again, that maybe they're doing like a quick comment, like, thanks for posting, this was really great, you know, or, or at, adding a question to a discussion. It doesn't have to be anything big, but again, and then showing that you're active and responding to your messages and things too can come up with recruiters who are using it as a, as a job search platform. LinkedIn is just like, it's amazing compared to what it was. Yes, it's really evolved quite a bit and it's getting much more like we can now embed native video and mission in our polls and do all kinds of different things. And so it is a fun one if you haven't been on there for a while to go in and look. And if you're a person who's not interested in using social media for as much social and more and you're interested in being more oriented professionally, it's kind of a cool way to go. They're sharing a lot of interesting stuff. It, it used to be a little stodgy and not anymore, not so much. Well, and even recruiters have said in, in your LinkedIn profile, which we have, have LinkedIn workshops coming up in career services and we can also do one-on-one yeah. -on -one appointments where we'll actually pull up your LinkedIn and give you tips and feedback. So just know that you can do that in career services. But um, some of the recruiters have even said they started to see students who, instead of just their photo, again, photo's important, photo and just like the basic bio or profile piece, that they'll actually do like an intro video and just, hi, you know, your name, here's what I'm studying. Pretty much your personal intro that you would do at a career fair, uh, your elevator pitch, and they do that, or they'll and then they'll add a video of a cool project that they're working on. Because then for the recruiter, you're not just this flat photo; they actually get to see you a little bit in action. Um, and a lot of recruiters have said they really like to see that on LinkedIn. So something to add on. Yeah, and that's an essential tip. I'm gonna um, remember to pass along to people too. If you're if you're interested in companies, like go ahead and go in and, and follow them. Yeah. Especially if you're like gearing up for career fairs or job interviews or whatever, you should be you should be looking at the company because you have to decide. You know, it's not just if they want you; it's also if you're a good fit for them. And you'll see, and you know, uh, um, for those of you that are most of you on LinkedIn, if you're not you're coming to the workshops, that's something that's interesting to talk about. Um, but you can even see your daily views. Have you guys have done that? You can go in and see like. And to be honest, I've been now after again somebody had mentioned this, I'm like, I need to go and do this. Um, but you know, there's a lot of times where I don't post a whole lot, so my views are you know five a day or whatever. And then all of a sudden, career fair time comes and I post something just about career fair, like not even anything that significant, and it's like 600 views, and then it goes right back down again. So you can see, I mean, just even posting one or two things can really keep your views high when you're looking for a position. That can be a really helpful way for recruiters to be able to view, to view you. And I've even known, you know, I'm not out there searching for positions, um, but typically it's right after I've posted something or linked to an article or something like that, that all of a sudden I start getting job offers in my, in my inbox. It's so interesting. And then the other thing is if you're, in, if you're mentioned in a news story or a social media post at all, um, we don't, it's not our policy, we don't tag students in photos. I mean, they're free to tag each other, we don't do that in photos, unless they're sharing a picture with us and we would give them credit. But on LinkedIn, if your lab is featured in a research story, if you've got a LinkedIn profile, we're going to try to link to it. And I've actually had uh, professors and researchers and others that I've had to like send them a quick email being like, Hey, your current title, it looks like you're working at another university. You might want to update that because we have 59,000 connections on LinkedIn now. And she can text that 59,000 connections. And so you're sharing out to a very, very large audience. And you want to make sure that what if they click on your name, that they're going to go to something cool. Minnesota. <laughs> yeah, it's unfortunately it's based on region, and so it's our region is Duluth, Minnesota region, and I don't know. So yeah, that's, that's weird. And I don't know. Yeah, like 
so close to us four hours away. Yeah. Um, but if, if you got <laughs> something that we that you can't, but if they see that you're, you know, Houghton, Michigan, you're a super Michigan University, Michigan, then they'll know that based on that piece. But yeah, it is weird with that. But I would also make sure that in your tagline, you know, where you're titled, that you don't just put student at Michigan Tech University. As a recruiter, that tells me nothing. Other than that, like, are you four years out from finishing? What's your degree? Are you, you know, about to graduate? Like, I know nothing if you just say student at Michigan Tech. So we always recommend adding something about your major or something else in there, too. Other questions? I'm going to have that for initial openings. I see many times. Uh, additional links or documents to ask for portfolio. So is this portfolio something different than social media? Something our own website? Typically, yes. It would be more than just your social media. So not, it depends on your your major, your you know, area of interest, all of that, but some will ask for a portfolio and they may want some kind of website with your actual projects and you know photos or videos or something like that. When they say portfolio, it depends on your major and what the company looking for all of those might be a little bit different um, but that might even be a good question within your academic department to ask them um, if they have examples we don't necessarily have those but to ask them for examples of what a professional portfolio for someone in your degree program may look like okay. great question i know yeah spc um, yeah. communication culture media and all of those yes. programs yeah. have um, very different portfolios than one has in another discipline but they have actual um, courses that you can take, and then they also have like workshop and sessions to help you put all those together. Other questions? I have a kind of a question, more about the question. Uh, so recently, one of my next cousins on LinkedIn, these are just are sharing so many things on LinkedIn, basically. So they're just they're calling my very good person. What is just on LinkedIn, which is not supposed to be on LinkedIn, and then has become a new Facebook these days. For example, this is so where's the line on what to post on Facebook? Because even when he posted it on LinkedIn, so many were he was getting very much positive responses to what he had but he also had just so many very very long posts. This is not something that has to be on LinkedIn, this is not Facebook. So where do we draw the line? Because there are, he, he actually got a good number of views because of this post. Mm -hmm. So people consider that as not professional. So where is the line when consider something as professional? That's a personal question. That's, you know, that's a personal choice that you make about where you want to put what you want to put. Because, I mean, I post things from work, but then I also post writing things, and I also like, um, Self-care things like I follow Ariana Huffington. And, you know, I like um, I like the full. You know, as, as Beth said, we're like a whole person, so we don't. You know, while well, each platform has its own personas, overall, what's got a rule in your choices is your persona, who you are. And I think too, with I mean, I, I like I'm not going to post personally. I'm not going to post a picture of. The, the awesome restaurant meal that I just had on LinkedIn. But if it was something that I cooked myself and I kind of think maybe my dad will like oh, the cooking world in the future, I might. You know, it really depends on what you're looking for. And that's like, I have a friend who, she's a photographer, she does a lot of lifestyle stuff. And so her posts are her life, our photos of her vacation, our all of that. And that's on LinkedIn because that is kind of part of her professional world too. So um, but you're right, it is, and, and the thing you have to keep in mind is with all social media, like sometimes there's going to be, especially if you're open with your social media, there's going to be people who are going to comment that you have to learn how to take it with a grain of salt sometimes. So, you know, if all these likes happened and this person felt like this was really good, if one person said this shouldn't be on LinkedIn, you know. But that's a good, that is a good question though, but you're right, it's a, it's a personal preference and, and kind of what brand, and that's kind of that branding piece. What brand do you want to put out there? You know, so again, uh, how 
I use my platform instead of going to be a little bit different. Again, I put a lot more of that outside of work stuff on my Instagram that I may not necessarily put on my LinkedIn. I don't know if I need other recruiters to see, you know, my bathroom renovations when they're really looking for career info, but. And uh, you will time. see, um, there are people, of course, we all know Twitter, um, there are intense political streams on Twitter. And you do see um, quite a few people who wish to express personal opinions and are affiliated with a university or a corporation or whatever, say, tweets my own. And so they're making that very definitive, but it's not protection. It's still not protection from um, an employer or someone coming back and taking issue with what you posted. So while I think it's cool to be able to like, you know, make it that very clear, like if you're posting like cat videos or whatever, tweet my own, that still doesn't mean you can go on some type of political rant and, or criticize, have a grid, criticize um, the people you're working with and not have the questions. So you just always have to, you just always have to think about it. Social media, I mean, I, we talk about mindless scrolling, but really, social media isn't mindless at all. So you need to be intentional with what you're doing. I'm thinking, I think, kind of like these sort of unwritten rules and all that stuff changes all the time. I mean, that's the hard part. And like keeping up with what's okay professionally and what's not, there's so many opinions on it, and it changes all the time. You know, we hear that one, well, if I don't have social media, our employer's going to think, this is shady, and but then you know other employers are saying you shouldn't be on this much. You know it. You know there's not always one answer to, to all of them. I remember questions. starting at UMC and actually being like, I have to go on Facebook to do this, you know. <laughs> and they'd be like, Yeah, we know. And they'd be like, I'm on Facebook at work. <laughs> <laughs> no. So it's just when you're looking at you know what what you need to do for your for your work and and um, it's yeah it's it's crazy. When you're engaging with social media, is it important to always be engaging with it in a professional manner? So, like my example would be this: I'm on Facebook, but I am not on Facebook being a poster. I don't necessarily like sharing things because I find it kind of annoying when just other people are just sharing a bunch of stuff. Mm -hmm. My reason for Facebook is a way of staying connected to certain people and part of on Facebook, trying to be unprofessional and trying to like post a lot of random stuff. It's just this is an extra connection that I have with like a certain group of friends. Is it okay to have social media like that, or does that give bad signals potentially to employers? You know, that you're them. I think it's. I mean, especially if you're there. I mean, I don't know. I think that's fine. Okay. I would say that there's an employer who's going on and going, oh, Jacob's not, he's on Facebook. Doesn't look like he's posting a whole lot. Like, Facebook is different though too in, in a lot of ways because it's fuzzy. Because it's, and, it, and most people are not just open unless you're, uh, well, I guess I don't know that for sure, but I would think it tends to be more, I don't know. Depends. I'm personally yeah. more so like a very private person. Yeah. This is why I was asking like about personal versus yeah. uh, professional. Is because in before social media, you had your professional, your work day, and I go home and now I'm personal. Like, yes, yeah. I still have my professional identity, yeah. what I sure. work, but I get to go home and do this. Yeah. In social media, thank you for the perspective that is just you all the time. Mm -hmm. But there's, um, there's no, as long as there's nothing that you're posting that's questionable, there are always opportunities to, um, if anybody asks, you just be able to say, you know, I use it for communicating with friends. And quite frankly, because of Facebook's algorithms and data sharing and these other things, it's not unusual for people to not be on, want to be on Facebook. Like even though Instagram owns Facebook or whatever, like some people have very strong feelings about Facebook and that's okay. So, but I think it's perfectly all right. I'm not as active on Facebook, but I have it because of my family. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to know when my cousin's kids make a snowman or whatever. Like, I'm on it to be in touch with my loved ones. Yep. And while other people might be on doing memes and fake news and whatnot, I try to stay out of all of that. I try to stay out of all of that. And it's 
much more personal. So I think that we're allowed to have those personal relationships. It's more about what you, you know, it's more about what you um, do post and what you don't. Yeah. So I don't think that I agree. I don't think people are going to get judgy about, you know, as long as it's not like, you know, like I said, like the shadow had from in 2008. I never, yeah, I've never had an employer who's like, well, they're not very active on Facebook. I think so their concern would more be, they're very active on Facebook and it's kind of not appropriate. <laughs> that would be one of the concerns. And for the office, I think it's, it's basically on what we define as profile, you want to be like this and you want to keep your profile. Some people also use Facebook as a professional area. Mm -hmm. Most of the of online recruiters, they also want to be professional on Facebook also. So they do all kinds of professional stuff. They don't do the personal stuff. I think then is considered to be the professional area. So maybe we just make them put it with it's it's on to who's making that profile and what he's making as well. That's that's what more defines Facebook because it's still very broad. I think people need to get that. I think it's cool that we have this freedom to kind of decide what we want to create, mm -hmm. and how we want to um, share what we have to offer the world. I mean, I really do look at it as a very high level of like communication, like communication, you know, 30,000 feet, and then communication with my loved ones, and then like how can we, how can we use this amazing tool um, for for the best, for the highest possible use, and you know, hopefully, for good jobs, and you know, build build up a, a good reputation, and connect with other people who feel like we do. I think um, it's like there's there's too many social media platforms, and and sometimes like I have to get. So I like the, I don't have a Twitter account, but I like what people post. I get tempted to make a Twitter account, but I don't I cannot follow up with it. Yeah. I don't know because it's trending. Would, would it be so judgmental that oh you're not on Twitter, you're not keeping up with the facts? I think you make a choice and you pick a couple of things. I mean, I'm in an entirely different space because social media is part of my work. So like I like over the Christmas holiday, I'm like, my idea was fun. It's like, let's check out TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> so then I did a TikTok of my husband snowballing and I'm like, this is so <laughs> not my role, but I was just playing with it. You know, and then we have Snapchat and there's always the ability to do Snapchat makeovers. Pretty much, um, that's what our Snapchat is all about. Is um, you know, taking over, and we we're just always looking. And now we're going to have these esports, right? So we're going to be in the Twitch environment, which is a whole different thing, right? I'm like barely keeping up with this. So it's always it's always like kind of learning, you know, what will be what will be the next things. But in the meantime, like what are the things that are important to us? And there are a lot of um, helpful hints out there. I have different people I follow. Different I follow and different people I follow and they're like Susie Zimmerman on Instagram. She has a lot of good videos or whatever. So I'll just um, Google and like in my spare time if you want to like, you know, watch some YouTube videos and just a little bit about or students will teach me things like where the trash can is on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, it's right there. Yeah, so, yeah I think that I mean Cindy had mentioned this earlier too that you know that social media can be a, a just great, you know, multiple platforms out there, all of that too. But I think it's especially it's different if your job is that, you know. Um, but on the day to day, for a lot of other people, I think if you're spending so much time trying to keep up on five platforms that you're missing what's right in front of you sometimes too. You gotta weigh that out a little bit as well. So, I mean, that's the same thing. Like, you know, I, I've got, you know. Couple that I that I keep up with here and there, but then the rest of them I don't. It's not again. It's not worth it for me to spend that much time on certain platforms because it doesn't make sense for me personally. 
that's a, a question for you to answer for your challenge. But, but yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't say there's not an employer's not gonna be out there going, well, not very active on Twitter, semi-active on TikTok, not active on you know. Again, I think it's more hurtful. It's more hurtful for the bad stuff <laughs> than the lack. Well, thanks for coming. Yeah. Well, uh, step up there and join the meeting. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, thanks for number two for any of the teachers if you have Yeah. Um, and please take Matt with you. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, I have to take a long time to do that. There's no friendship. Yes, thank you so much. Yes, for somebody that did her job last year. Yes, you know what it was like. Thank you for donating your time. It's pretty appreciated.